Hey there team and welcome to another update on the situation in Iceland looking at the geologic unrest and anticipation before what we expect to be in another eruption on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Thanks for joining me. Today is Tuesday, March 18th. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey and we have a new Met Office update and so I thought we'd run through the information there. Actually two to look at along with the regular look at the data and just seeing where we're at right now as we sort of eagerly anticipate this next eruption. I mean, the short of it is that the magma, all signs point to the magma continue, continuing to accumulate in the subsurface. Uh, that magma storage zone or system seems to be at or very close to capacity. So it's just a matter now of, you know, exactly how much more magma can be squeezed in there along with the gases that it contains. And at what point will that start to trigger an eruption where we see a cascading sequence of events where uh, that magma starts ascending, rocks are breaking, earthquakes are being triggered, and ultimately that magma finds a vent as it makes its way up to the surface. I think uh, Iceland and people from around the world that have been watching this are eagerly awaiting this next event with some mixed amount of interest and fascination and trepidation. And so it's interesting and it'll be interesting to see exactly what takes place as this transpires over the next few uh, days, weeks, potentially. So let's get right to the Met Office update. And actually what I wanna do is take you back to, they have two that came out in the last two days. So one on the 17th, one on the 18th. Um, and the one on the 17th is, is important because um, there was apparently a little bit of error in some of the earthquake locations that were plotted up. So most of this update reads the same as we would expect it to. Magma is accumulating where they expect the eruption to occur between Sunukur and Storstokvel. Um, but here's the important part here. On March 11th, the Met Office reported changes in the location of earthquakes over the past few weeks with seismic activity, activity appearing to be positioned several hundred meters further east than in the lead up to previous events. So, and we had seen this as well. You can see this uh, on the map here. I was curious about this in the in the moments it was happening, but I didn't really uh, think much of it. And that is that the earthquakes that we've been seeing over the past two weeks or so were shifted a little bit east from the Fisher series and the vents that had opened up from the previous eruptions. And so it seemed a little odd to me, but I thought, well, maybe it's found a, a weaker spot in the rocks there. So it wasn't totally out of the ordinary and they were still quite close. Um, but reading on it, there's a reason why those were located where they were. So the Met Office uh, conducted a high resolution analysis of these earthquakes. Earthquake locations are determined using signals from multiple seismometers in a given area, meaning that interference from a single instrument can affect the final location calculations. The influence of each seismic station in the region on the earthquake positioning results was analyzed revealing an issue with one instrument that caused the seismic activity to appear farther east than before. So apparently one of the seismometers was uh, not calibrated correctly or just a little bit off, and that meant that that was affecting the, the final location positions of those other earthquakes. And so they were shifted a little bit further. Um, and so they've gone back and reviewed those and, and made some corrections there. So that was the update from yesterday which has bearing on a little bit on the earthquake from today. So this just came out uh, one o'clock PM local time in Iceland on the 18th. So again, magma can continuing to accumulate and the volume, their estimated volume beneath the power plant is greater um, since the whole eruptive sequence began. So we haven't had this much magma stored in the subsurface since this whole uh, eruptive sequence begin. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that all that magma is going to erupt when we get an eruption here in a few days or weeks. Um, and again, there's the possibility that that magma stays underground, finds some other space or weak zone, and we get maybe some intrusion. We saw that in March of last year. Uh, March 2nd, we had a small intrusion that actually delayed the eruption that eventually took place on March 16th. And we might see something like that here as well. Uh, it's just a matter of waiting and seeing. Um, they talk about, and this is the, the main focus of this update, is on the seismicity that's been increasing. Seismic activity has been increasing over the past few weeks, indicating that pressure at the eruption site is rising. Eruption could begin with very little warning. 
Um, so they talked about that the seismic activity has been increasing steadily um, since about late February. They had a few days there in February where the data was just not coming in very well because they had a lot of storms which and weather conditions which, which affect their ability to uh, record that data. Um, so let's go ahead and, and look at the, the graphics they have here and let you look for this, look at this for yourself. So there's those earthquakes here. And I think these are, let's see, the map to source query. Yeah. So this is, so this shows you the error right here. So see these earthquakes here, a little bit off of the Fisher trend location. And these are the quakes before they were corrected. So this does not reflect the true position of the quakes. These quakes should be shifted over to the west a few hundred kilometers. So, but nonetheless, I think the main point is seeing the number of earthquakes, not exactly the position, because the number of earthquakes coming in over time uh, is an indicator that the system is becoming more pressurized, where the magma is now starting to break, find little cracks in the rock and, and move into space that it can and start to break rock. And that's what those earthquakes are as it becomes more and more pressurized. So we have the map of the earthquakes over, I think this is the past two weeks. Yeah, since, uh, since uh, actually since late December. So this is uh, all of 2025. Um, and then over here, we have two graphs that show the same time period from December of 2024 up till today. The top one here is uh, magnitude. So earthquake magnitude over this period. Again, you can see in December and January, very few earthquakes in this region, all below 1.5 or so in terms of magnitude. Uh, and then as we get into February, the frequency of the earthquakes picks up. The magnitudes increase a little bit as well. Little lull right here, that's from the weather. Probably these other gaps here might also be weather related. Uh, and then you can see as we go into March that the earthquake numbers increase in terms of just total numbers of quakes and then we also get one up to magnitude two so the end the point here is just earthquakes increasing in terms of magnitude and frequency bottom graph here uh, let me get my head out of the way so you can see the whole thing just shows the uh, earthquakes by week so the total number of earthquakes by week you can see in december uh, there was you know less than five earthquakes in this region per week as we moved into move into january those pick up to anywhere from 10 to 15 or so earthquakes per week going into February. Uh, we had one anomalously high week here with over 30, but this low one here again is probably that gap right there that was due to the weather. So a few of these uh, weak earthquake counts might be a bit lower just because of weather conditions, but you can see a pretty good uh, rise, uh, almost an exponential curve there fit to the data if we take into account that this one was affected by the weather to the increase in um, in earthquakes. And then March 10th to the 16th, about 70 earthquakes per week there. This one here, the last week, the 17th to the 23rd of March is really low. And I don't know if that's weather related or not. So that's, that's the one kind of big outlier here. That one should be easily as tall as the other one here if we sort of assume this, this trend has continued. Although it could be that, you know, now we're seeing maybe the, the system, you know, it's taken advantage of the spaces and the fractures that it can find and produce those earthquakes. And maybe now uh, there's a little lull in earthquake activity that might be happening right before it erupts. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's, that's a possibility. But my guess would be that this has got to be somewhat weather related to have it that low there. Uh, going back to the Met Office update, I think that was most of the information here. They do talk about the deformation measurements still show uplift. Um, uplift continues, although at a slightly reduced rate. There's no signs of subsidence in the area around Svartsengi. According to GPS and INSAR observations, magma continues to accumulate, and the volume, again, has never been greater since the whole thing began December 2023. Hazard map is still the same as well. So let's look at the earthquake data a little bit here. Um, so if you're really kind of like on pins and needles and just watching this thing as best you can, I suppose in addition to maybe watching a webcam, so watching a live webcam would be a good way to track this thing. But another way to do it um, is we know that that earthquake should be preceded, or excuse me, that erupt, the next eruption should be preceded by 
some earthquake activity. It might be it might be minimal, uh, it might be very fast in terms of the, the time frame it takes place in. But a good place to look would be this website here, the Vafri site. And what you might want to do is, you know, I often leave mine just defaulted to the 24 hour range. So that just shows me all the earthquakes that have occurred in the last 24 hours. But a, maybe a better way to do it is just set it to a much shorter time frame, maybe two hours or so. Uh, and then, you know, right now there's nothing because no, no earthquakes have happened in the last two hours. But if you were to check this thing, you know, pretty regularly or on your computer or whatnot, you might see the uptick taking place there. So you might fiddle around a bit with the the time component, you know, whether it's six hours, it sort of depends on how frequently you're watching this thing. If you're just glued to this thing, uh, you know, every half hour or so, you could set it for half an hour, you could set it for an hour, and that might be a good way to kind of monitor things as we get closer and closer to what we expect to be another volcanic eruption. Looking at earthquakes over the past week, uh, you'll remember in one of my last updates, there was all sorts of, um, uh, you know, interest and speculation about this swarm of earthquakes here uh, at the tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula. Those now are about a week or so old, uh, although this little cluster in green is about four days old or so. Um, and of course, those have not, you know, not, nothing was associated with those. And in, in the moment, people speculated that they were going to trigger the eruption or maybe there was an eruption that was going to occur there. And I tried to quell those, those thoughts as much as I could with my update. Um, but those are still hanging on the, uh, the, the data here just because they're a week or so old. Um, so these, you know, will probably come and go. And we'll, I, I have no doubt we'll see another swarm of earthquakes there at some point in the future. But remember, these, these tech, volcano tectonic systems are often segmented. So this segment of the plate boundary uh, behaves a little bit separately from other segments like the Krishivik system. Uh, the Brennan Steinfeld system, the Hengill system, um, all of these are they are somewhat linked too. So, but but in terms of their magma supply, their earthquakes, um, they are somewhat separate in that regard. So that's an important point to consider. But focusing around uh, Grindavik here, you can see the earthquakes that have occurred over the past week, and I think what shows up most obviously here is that cluster there. Now these are occurring over full week there's blue dots and greens and yellows and oranges um, but i think they they probably represent and we'll find out here hopefully within you know maybe days to a week or so this should be the location all things being equal of where we see the next eruption could be somewhere else um, but based on what we've seen in the past based on the earthquake data we're seeing now this is the place to watch for where the vent opens up now once the vent opens up of course we know it will lengthen um, and it doesn't always lengthen to the north and the south at the same rate or the same length. And so it'll be interesting to see um, exactly where that goes. We've seen in the past sometimes uh, these fissure vents opening up like a zipper and propagating further to the north and maybe a little bit to the south. And it could do the opposite thing. Now, we, we'd prefer it to go further north because that's um, less impact on people versus heading down towards uh, Grindavik there. But there's our earthquake data over the past week. If we switch over to the GPS data, um, again, just to show that the uplift continues. So here is uh, go. Here is the Svartsengi station. And you can see, you know, again, lulls. It's kind of dipped and uh, ebbed and flowed over time since December. But the uplift and the overall trend has continued. And there's good reason to believe that that uplift continues today, according to the Met Office. So this is just one station. They looked at all the stations in aggregate, in addition to the INSAR data. And that magma still seems to be uh, moving into the system, although everything sort of slowed down a little bit here, kind of at heat capacity, more or less. Uh, and then finally, I just I grabbed one quick uh, news article. This was from a couple of days ago, two days ago. Uh, be prepared for anything to start erupting. And so they talk about the earthquakes that have occurred um, and that it's likely to begin anytime soon with, with short warning. Um, expects a 30 to 40 minute warning for an eruption. Um, and the magma accumulation is greater than before. We talked about that. And then that earthquake swarm down at the tip of the peninsula that I just showed uh, was fading away. And so, um, again, that doesn't seem to have any 
bearing at this point whatsoever on the eruptive activity uh, that we expect over here near Grindavik. Now, real quick to end this update, we could talk about, again, the scenarios really quick. And we've discussed these before, but I think they're worth mentioning here again as we get a little bit closer. So again, here's your kind of overview map. Uh, Grindavik here, power plant, Blue Lagoon. Um, zooming out just a bit here, we have the airport up in this region and the capital Reykjavik just off to the northeast here. So we expect the earthquake will likely begin uh, about where we had the last few eruptions, and that's sort of in this area right here. Um, and if it does erupt in this area here, we would expect probably not a lot of warning, maybe um, 20, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, uh, and very few earthquakes. So there will be earthquakes that accompany this eruption when it occurs, uh, but they might be few in terms of total number. If the eruption were to take place anywhere else, we expect there to be more warning time and more lead up in terms of earthquake activity. So if it were to be further south, um, that would necessitate breaking more, more rock in the subsurface, opening up those vents, and therefore producing more earthquake and more of a seismic signal there. And so we'd get a little bit of more of a lead up there. And likewise, if it were to occur further to the northeast along uh, this lineament, we'd expect that as well. And we have seen that before. We had the uh, the November eruption was a little bit further north and up in this area up here. So um, it's the wait and see game again. Uh, it continues here in Iceland. Um, they've done all that they can and they're continuing to do things to be prepared. They've raised the berms even higher. I think they're in excess of 10 meters in some places. Um, and so they have those mitigation structures in place. They have a warning system in place. They have evacuation procedures. Um, and they've pretty much done everything they can. And now it's just a question of uh, when and where this eruption might begin. But we'll continue to monitor the situation and try to um, jump on as quick as I can once the eruption begins. And we'll just take it from there. But uh, in the meantime, just enjoy the science, enjoy learning with me, and we'll see you next time. Take care.